Hi, this is Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. In this video, I want to show you how the carousel tool works. The carousel tool is really easy to use. Uh, this video shouldn't be too long because this is so easy. It's more fun than anything. I just grabbed the carousel tool and just drew a box out here onto this blank canvas to show you what a carousel does. Basically, a carousel is like a slider uh, a slideshow of sorts, except that it does more. You're not limited to just images. You can put just about anything inside a carousel. This box that I just drew out here is an empty carousel with four pages. That's how you start out is with four pages. I know there's four pages because that's what these little dots do. Uh, these are actually changing from page to page. You're not seeing anything though because there's nothing in my carousel yet. And then there's these little uh, previous and next buttons here. Now let me double click on the carousel object to show you how it's configured. I'm going to double click and show you what we have to work with. The carousel object allows you to do a lot of different things. For starters, you don't have to have just four pages. You can have anywhere from one to 25 pages, and you can change that, of course, by changing this number. We'll stick with four for this demonstration. You can decide how long each slide or each page pauses because the carousel is going to automatically change the page after so many seconds and you can decide how long that slide lasts before it changes to the next slide or next page and even how fast the animation is of the actual change that's what this is right here you can change these milliseconds and change the duration of that animation and even what page to start on you can decide by default it puts it in the forward mode that means that it's just going to go from one slide to the next and then start over i kind of like to set mine to uh, circular so that it goes to from the first slide to the second slide, etc. Then when it gets to the last slide, it just starts over at the first slide again. But you can decide the way in which it does that and even add effects in those transitions we'll talk about here in a little bit. I'll talk about full width mode in a minute too so I can demonstrate that. Easing is very subtle. That's just basically how the animation occurs and there are a number of those for you to experiment with. I'll just leave it at linear for now because there's just too many possibilities. The navigation buttons are these forward, these previous and next arrows that we talked about. It's built in with these little images that you would use for that, but you don't have to use those. You can turn them off if you want to and not have them show. If I click OK, you'll see that those are gone. Or you can use your own. You can just upload an image right here that you would rather use. You click this and then you browse for a button of your own that you want to use for the previous and next buttons. You can also decide where they appear now on the carousel. And this is new in version 10 of 90 Second Website Builder. If I click OK, since I've enabled it, you can see that the previous and next buttons are here. But I can change that by going to, let's say, I want them in the center, top, for example. If I said center and top, you'll see what happens. I click OK, and now the buttons are up here. Well, I probably don't want to do that, but you get the idea. I'll change it back to uh, center left, right, center, and that's kind of the default. And then you can see then they end up back here. You could also put them on the bottom. Anyway, you get the idea. So if you're going to use those, you can decide where they go. You can even decide how far they're offset by pixels. Right now they're four pixels offset. If I was to change this, say, to 10, then they would move inward into the carousel that way. And also the the vertical. This is the X, Y offset. Anyway, play with those. The point is you can put those arrows just about anywhere you want within the carousel. Enough about that. The pagination is what these little buttons are down here. They're actually little black and white circles. And if you want to show pagination, you can. You can use the built-in images or you can use your own images. Again, if you want to have uh, your own image where people can click on these little images and go to that specific page in the carousel, you can. How they show up. Uh, is all set here. Their size, their color, the border, the shape that they are, whether they're round or not, is all set here. I'm going to leave these by default because those are easy for you to monkey with and uh, m you know make them look the way you want them to look. Under the Style tab, we can set the background as well as the border of the carousel. I'm going to leave these by default for now, but in a minute I'll show you some uh, things you can do by changing the style. Okay, so I haven't really made any changes to the default. This is basically what a default carousel looks like. Transparent background, no border, and just four pages. Now here's the point. You can put just about anything inside a carousel. And by the way, it can be just about any size you want to. I'm going to stretch this about this big, and I've already got some stuff out here on my canvas that I'm going to put in here. So for example, you can put images in here, of course. You know you've put an image inside the carousel because you'll notice that it highlighted with that blue border there. Whenever you're bringing an object into a carousel, 
It's kind of like when you work with layers. You'll remember that when you drag something into the object, it highlights with that blue line. That means we are now inside the carousel. I've just put an object, or an image in this case, inside the carousel. You're not limited to images. You can put just about anything in here. For example, I'll put some text here as well. Here's a text object. You can put multiple objects on the same page. You can even put layers inside a carousel. Here's a layer that's got both images and text in it. So this layer is sitting in here. You can also put in videos. In fact, you're not limited. You don't have to just have one object here. I'll put a shape in here so you can see. We can do just about anything we want. Okay, so it's not a very pretty design, but for the sake of demonstration, you can see I've got a lot of different kinds of objects inside my four pages. Now, here's what it looks like. I'm going to click F5 so you can see what the carousel does. You can tell it's a bit of a slideshow, and if we wait a few seconds, you can see that it changes, and you'll notice that it's showing us what page we're on because these automatically change. And if you remember, I set it to go circular so it goes right back to page one when it gets to the end, and so that's what you're watching, a basic carousel with those settings. And of course you can jump to any page at any time you want to. So even though we're on page one now, I can click on this and jump all the way to page three. That's what the pagination does. And you can also use the forward and back arrows to move around. So if I want to go to the page before, or go next. That's how that works. I think that gives you an idea, and you could probably make a carousel now just from that alone. But let me show you a couple of really cool tricks with the carousel. I'm going to double click on here. And this is a new uh, feature that's very, very strong. First of all, let me go to the Style tab, and I'm going to show you what happens if we make a carousel that has, let's say, a solid background uh, instead of white. Let's make it something that you'll be able to see easily in the video. Let's go with, uh, I don't know, what Sandy Brown looks like, but we'll use Sandy Brown. You'll see that our carousel now has this background. Now, I'll click F5 just so you can see. That's all I've changed is the uh, background, and we can view our carousel. But what I want to demonstrate, and now I'm going to close the preview, is this feature called full width mode. Now this is very, very cool. And if you check this box for your carousel, you've basically made a carousel that is responsive. In other words, the carousel is going to be the full width of the page, no matter how big the user's browser is. Just by checking this box, watch what happens. I'll click F5, and you'll notice that when my browser window comes up, the carousel is all the way across the page. Even if I change the size of my browser, you'll notice that by watching these buttons here, you can see that the carousel is responding to the size of the browser. So this would make a great header if you've ever seen any of those uh, websites that have big images and slideshows in their navigation. You can do that with the carousel tool in 90 Second Website Builder and you can see you have this great effect. Okay, I'm going to close this and show you a couple of other things. Some of the um, effects that are fun to work with are the transitions. So I'm just picking forward circular, but there's all kinds of things you can do. We'll just kind of pick one here at random. Let's see, let's try a, uh, a folding effect. If we click on effect fold and click OK, this is going to change the way the slide changes. I'm going to click F5, and you'll see that when the slide changes, it does a fold effect. Instead of sliding, it's doing this sort of fold. And you can experiment with those. Let's try another one. Instead of a fold, let's try rotate. That's pretty dramatic. So we're going to rotate in the transition from slide to slide, or in other words, from page to page, and watch what happens when we do that. You'll see that it spins, kind of a cool effect. You can imagine how that would look if you had maybe some nice big photos and images, what that effect would look like. You'll notice I put a video in my carousel, and that means um, if the user wanted to, you could have them click the play button on that video, and that video would play. 90 so, second so the video will play. I'd probably want to slow down the transition, of course, because I've got it changing really fast, but you can affect how long it takes to uh, make the transition, how long it stays on the slide. All of that, of course, is editable. Let me show you a real life example of how I'm using a carousel at 90 Second Website Builder. I'm not actually done with it, but I have this rather large carousel. I think I've got, oh, well, let's double click on it and see. I've got, I'm using 21 pages. You can use 25. I'm using 21. I'm using the effect rotate here. I'm having it pause a little longer, 5,000. And I'm not using the navigation buttons. I turn those off. I don't want those showing. I did make my. Uh, 
pagination button's a little smaller. My circles are down to size 8 because you can do that here. Make sure they're on the bottom. What I'm doing is I'm putting this on my website where I want to show some of the new features of version 10. So I've just put some simple images and some text in here that I'm still working on. And um, you see it's not quite done yet. Let me press F5 so you can see how it actually previews. So you can see that the carousel tool on this page is going to demonstrate uh, just very simply some of the uh, new features of 90 Second Website Builder. That's just a very simple use of carousel. I'm using that that rotate feature. I've just got some simple text, some simple images, and it's just a great way to show off a product or screenshots or photographs. It'd be a great tool for a photographer or somebody that wants to show images that way. So anyway, that's about all there is to the carousel tool. Just have fun with it. Remember that full width mode makes it responsive and more and more people I'm sure are going to be wanting to use it that way. Just have fun with it. It's a great tool in 90 Second Website Builder.